Today, I'm going to show you how to build a minimal yet fully automated directory that can capture leads using Web Studio and Airtable. We'll cover this in four steps. Those being project or site build, database creation, database integration, and finally, automation. At the end of the video, I'll also share everything that you need to be able to clone the project onto your own Web Studio account and to set up your own directory completely free. We'll get started by diving straight into the builder. All right, inside of the builder, this is what we'll be creating today. Completely automated directory that has different items that are automatically populated from an Airtable database. We'll have the ability for users to submit their own resources. And then we'll also have the ability for users to sign up to our newsletter or to subscribe to different updates to our own database. And again, this will also be fed into that same Airtable base. Let's start off with step one, which is the project or site build inside of Web Studio. For this first step, you're going to head over to the clonable URL. This will be in the description down below, and this will give us a boilerplate template to kick things off. Once you've got the URL open, it'll look something like this, then simply head over to the top left, click on the menu, and then click on clone. This will clone the project to your own Web Studio account. You can then name it whatever you want to name it. Let's call this directory demo. Go ahead and click clone. We're then gonna go back to our Web Studio dashboard and you'll see your newly cloned project right at the top of your projects here. Simply click on it and that will open up the project in its entirety. Now this will be mapped to my database. We'll want to remap this to your own and I'll show you that next. But essentially this project has a base homepage, which you can see here with our different directory items. And it also has a style guide page, which is essentially all of the basic tokens and styles that I use across all of my projects, to keep things nice and consistent in building. You can customize the styles from here if you want to, but for now we're gonna focus on building the actual directory. So jump back over to the homepage. We're going to select our grid of items here. I'm going to expand that in the navigator to find the collection. From here, I'm going to remove the existing map. So you can see I've got a variable AT1, which just stands for Airtable 1. So I'm just going to click on this and delete the binding, clear everything that lives in here, click out of it, and I'm also going to delete the variable. You can see from here, we now just have a clean site that isn't connected to any database, but it's retained the styles of the card and the grid that we want to use to create a directory. You'll also notice that it's kept the responsive layouts as you shift between breakpoints. Everything is already pre-styled and pre-designed. Now this is super easy and this covers step one, which is just the project and the site. Moving on to step two, database creation. In this step, we'll set up an Airtable base and this is where we'll house all of our data. This will include the actual directory items, the leads generated from the directory site, as well as the submissions for new directory items. We're going to do this with Airtable. So to get started, head over to Airtable.com, log in or create an account if you don't yet have one. Again, it's completely free. And we're going to set up a new base. So I'm gonna go bottom left here and create. I'm going to start from scratch. I'm just going to start by naming my base directory demo, which is what we named our project. You can give it a color if you want. I'm gonna choose this fancy pink fuchsia. And I'm now going to start configuring my different tables within the database. So I'll need three tables for this database. The first one will be our actual directory. Let's go again here on our table. We're just going to rename it. We'll just call this one directory items. The second table that we'll create will be our directory submissions. And this is where we collect all the requested directory items that other people want to submit to our new directory. So again, I'm going to add a blank table from scratch. And I'm just going to call this directory submissions. And finally, I want to create one last table within this space which we'll use to collect and store all of our leads. So again, this one, I'm just gonna go create a new table and I'll just call this subscribers. You can really call it whatever you want. All right, we've got our three tables set up. Now we need to configure the fields within each of the tables. So let's start off with our directory items. Now, if we think about the items that we want to go into this directory, we want to have a featured image, a title, a description, a URL, and potentially a pretty URL. Let's take a quick look at the published site to see where these fields actually map to. We jump over, you can see we've got our featured image here, our title here, our description just below it, our fancy URL. So it's not the actual URL, right? It's just a prettified version. And then if we actually click on the card, it does lead us to the actual website. So we need that URL as well. So let's jump over to our table here. We'll keep the name field as it is. I'm going to delete the other fields that I have here in the table. So just get rid of these. And I'm then going to create a description and this will be a long text field. I'm going to create a featured image field. 
So let's call this featured image. And this will be an attachment. I want the URL. Let's we'll call this URL. And this will be a URL field. And finally, I want the pretty URL. So the shortened one. I'll just call this pretty URL. Something simple. And this will just be a single line of text. From here, I can begin populating my directory. So I'll just start adding items. For example, I wanted to list the Web Studio website on my directory. I could go Web Studio as the name. For the description, I'll just jump over to the site and pull the description that we've got here. Jump back to my directory, paste that in. My featured image, I can just upload an image from my computer. For the URL, I'll just grab the URL of the Web Studio site. And then as the pretty URL, I'm just going to type this out manually. So I'm going to ditch the whole HTTPS dot dot slash slash, and I'll just type in webstudio.is. And again, that's so that I can just display that as the domain name on the card. OK, we've got all of our base fields populated here. Let's now create the fields for the directory submissions as well as the subscribers. Now, for the submissions, this is more or less up to you on what data you want to receive before publishing it to your Web Studio or to your website directory. In our case today, I'm just going to collect the user's first name, email, a message of what they're submitting, as well as a URL. I'll do that here. Again, I'm going to keep the name field. I'm going to get rid of the rest of the fields that we have here. And I'll populate this with email. Just find the email field here. Create. I'll then do message. I'll use a long text field here and potentially a URL for the project they want to link to. So again, I'll just call this URL and check that in there. Lastly, I want to populate my subscriber fields. This one, again, I'll keep super simple. I'm just going to collect the name. Uh, actually, no, I'm not even going to collect the name for this one. I'm only going to collect the email. So I'm going to delete everything that we have in here. Can't delete the name field. I'm going to find the email field, create. And will it now let me? No, it won't. No, it won't let me delete the name one. That's OK. We can automate that later on. OK, that mostly wraps up step two. We've got our directory database set up. Uh, the last thing you might want to do is just populate this directory with your own items. I'm not going to do this on camera. I'll just cut the video here, and I'll come back with a populated directory. Alrighty, I filled up my directory here. You can see I've got in my resources or the directory the different items that I want to display. Um, I've just chucked in a base subscriber to test things out, as well as some examples of my requested resources. And that wraps up step two, which is setting up our Airtable database. We're now going to move on to step three, which is the database integration piece. Now, the integration piece involves two parts. The first part is configuring Airtable to be accessible over their API. For this, we'll need to set up our API key and give it access to the right base. The second part will be the mapping and the binding of all the different fields. And this will essentially populate our different fields of the directory on Web Studio to automatically generate new items in our database. We'll start off on the Airtable front. Jump back over to your directory over on Airtable. From here, the first thing we want to do is head over to your account or profile icon and you're going to open up the developer hub. Just opened it up in a new tab. And from here, we want to create a new token. So what I'm going to do is create a new token. I'll just call this video directory demo. You can name it whatever you want to name it. I'm just naming it this so that I remember what it is. We're going to give it scopes. So this is essentially what can this API key access. And we need to give it access to everything the site needs to display our content. So for this, I'm going to go data records read. Yes, I want it to be able to read our different data records and base schema read. Um, as for access, I want to give it access to my directory demo base, which I'm going to select here. And I can then go ahead and create the token. Once the token's been created, copy this and save it. You'll need it in the next step, but it won't ever be shown to you ever again. So just make sure you've copied the token, pasted it somewhere, and we'll come back to it in just a second. Me, I'm just going to paste it over on a Google Docs is over there. Uh, and I now need to grab the API details. So I'm going to jump back over to my Airtable base. This time, I'm going to click on the little Help button. And I'm going to click on API documentation. From here, this will tell you what you need to be able to integrate the API. So if I scroll down a little bit here, you'll see in the authentication, we have a URL, which is the URL that we'll need to map our base. And then we have the authorization, which is our API key in secret. So you can see here, we just need bearer and your secret API token. Let's go ahead and map these. I'm going to start off by copying the URL. Just go ahead, select the copy, then jump back over to your directory, select the grid, select the collection inside of the grid, and we're going to create a new variable. So I'm just going to click here, plus, name it. I'm just going to name this one Airtable. The type will be a resource. 
the URL will be the URL that we just copied. So paste that in there. And then as headers, we're going to add a header pair. And if we remember in our documentation, it said we need the authorization. So I can paste that in as the name. And then the value is bearer followed by your API token. So again, I'm gonna paste in bearer space. I'm then gonna go back and copy that original API token. Remember the one that I told you to save because we'll need it. That's the one and paste that in here and go ahead and click enter. And from here, we can then map this collection to our new Airtable base. So I'm going to go ahead and select the collection. This time in data, I'm going to select the little purple plus icon. I'm going to select the Airtable JSON binding. And you'll see this pulls in all of our Airtable data. If I expand this and have a look at what's being pulled in, you can see it's pulling in our records. We have got our icon buddy record, the pretty URL that we created. Uh, what else have we got? We've got the featured image. I'm sure we've got the description. Here we go, description. And this repeats itself for all the different items in our collection. So we know we've got the right data. Now, with our variable created and our data mapped, you'll notice that it's still not generating all of the items inside of our collection, even though we can see all of their data here. That is because we want to jump past the first data and the first records in JSON, however JSON works, um, to get to our different items. So to do so, I'm just going to click again on our data button. We've got Airtable here. I'm gonna hit dot on the keyboard, select data, and then dot again and select records. I'm now going to click out. You'll see this now populates our different items. Now we've got all the right cards here. On our project here, it's already mapped all the fields. This is likely because we had done this in the past when setting up the project, but we're gonna remap these fields together so you can see exactly how it all works. So I'm gonna start off just by unbinding all the different fields. Go source here, let's delete that. Our heading image here, our header text here, I'm going to delete that. And again, I'm just gonna repeat this process for all the different items that have been mapped so that we can remap them together. And finally, our URL, there we go. Okay, we can just see we've got the right amount of items, but not the actual right content. Now, this is how it should display when you connect your Airtable database onto your own Web Studio project. Let's now map all these fields together. We're gonna start off with the name. So just select the heading, go into settings, text content, where it says icon buddy, click on the little purple button. And then we're just going to select collection item. And then from here, I'm gonna click dot on the keyboard, fields, dot name. And this will pull in name field. Click out, you can see we've now got all the right names. Let's do the descriptions. So again, I'm gonna select it, go to the text, text content, I'm going to select that, collection item, and I'll repeat the same process, dot fields, and then dot description, that is our description, click out, that will then populate for each of our items. Uh, let's grab the text URL, so this is the pretty URL that we created, same thing, plus collection item, dot fields, dot pretty URL, click out, we've now got our nice pretty URLs, let's do the link. Um, so again, I'm going to go into the href this time, I'm gonna select it, Select the collection item, bugs out, that's okay. It will, it will recover as soon as we get the right field. Fields, and then this one we want URL, click out. There we go, we've got all the right URLs. And last but not least, we want the image. Now the image is just a little bit trickier because Airtable creates multiple versions of the thumbnail. So to grab this, you're gonna select the image. We're going to go into the source. Again, select the collection item. This time, again, we want to do fields. Then we want to do image. But at the end of this, we want to put a little bracket, zero bracket at the end of it. And then finally, again, dot, and we want URL. Click out. This will fix the error because it now has a correct image URL. But you can see it's now populated all of the images that we uploaded into our Airtable base. Click out. I'm just going to double check that I've got everything that I need here. That looks good. I'm just going to double check that it looks good on every device. I am happy with that. Perfect. And this wraps up step three being our database integration. We can see everything that we have over on Airtable is correctly populating over on our new Web Studio directory site. Now, finally, step four, automation. The automation step is going to use Airtable's automation engine to, well, automate all of the data from this site. So what we want to do is we want to collect submissions from our form directly to the directory. We want to collect submissions from our leads form as subscribers. We want to populate that into the directory. And I'll show you very quickly how you can then use the automation engine to expand its functionality. If you wanted to say automatically approve different directory items, if you wanted to 
send an email notification to someone when a directory item gets submitted, or essentially how you can manipulate some of this data using Airtable's automation. So we're gonna start off by jumping over to Airtable, which is where we're going to collect the emails. We're going to go to the automations tab. Now I've already built the automation here, but we're going to rebuild it together. What we want to do here is create an automation that adds the subscriber to Airtable when they submit the form on our website. How do we do this? Go ahead and create a new automation. So I'm going to do that from here. Bottom left, create automation. Let's just call this demo new subscriber. So I know which one it is. We're going to add a trigger. The trigger for this will be a webhook. So we're going to select when webhook received and it's gonna give us an example webhook URL. So we'll just copy that, jump back over to our Web Studio project, go ahead and find the form that we want to integrate. As you can see, it's this one down below here. Select the form and then we want to add an action. Now for the action here, I'm just gonna delete what was in there previously. All you need to do is paste in that Airtable URL and that's pretty much it. Okay, kind of, mostly. Um, we're going to test the action so that Airtable knows it receives the right data. So from here, what I'm going to do is just publish the site. So give it a sec, go ahead and publish. Once it's published, we're then going to test that form on the live site. Alrighty, the site has been published. Go ahead and open it up and you'll see your database populating and below that, your subscriber field. So we're just gonna test this out. I'm just gonna chuck in test at test.com, hit subscribe. Gives me my little thank you for subscribing message. If I jump back over to Airtable from here, we can see step successful, it's received an input. And if I have a look, it's received test at test.com. Perfect. Now we want that data to move into our Airtable base. So I'm going to select advanced logic. We want to create a record. We're going to select the description. Let's just say create subscriber. And we want the action to run always. And the table, we want it to be a subscriber table, field, email. And I'm just going to add what we received as the email into that field. We'll generate a quick preview. You can see it's created. The last step that we want to do here is we want to turn it on. Now, if we jump back over to our data and we jump over to our subscribers, we're going to test this process out together. I'm gonna to go back to my site, I'm gonna refresh it. I'm going to submit a new submission, test at test.com, subscribe, jump back over to Airtable and you can see it's already populated here. Now, we're going to repeat this exact process to map the directory request form. Uh, to do so, just go ahead and select the add a resource to Web Studio. This lives inside of a dialogue. So if you wanna open it up, easy way to do it is just to go preview, click on the preview, it opens it up, exit the preview, it's here. I'm then going to select this form and I'm gonna repeat the exact same steps. So I'm gonna go into the action and I'm going to go back to my Web Studio automations and I'm going to create a new automation for a directory request. Now I've already created this. I won't do all the steps in the video. It's exactly the same as we just did, but essentially instead of just having an email field, this time we're mapping the name, the email, as well as the message to our requested directory table. If I have a look on the data side. You can see the requested resources. We've got two examples here. Let's create a test submission to make sure it all works. So I'm gonna go ahead and open the site, add a new Web Studio resource. My name will be, I don't know, John Doe, email John at do.com message, please add Web Studio to this list uh, with uh, many Ds in my ad, okay. Uh, submit, beep, boop, beep, boop, thank you. We get a little thank you message. We jump back over to Airtable and we can see here that that submission has been populated in our requested resource field. Now, if you wanted to take this even further, you can use the automations to automatically take the requested resources that have been submitted and send them over to your pre-approved populated resource tab. I'll leave this up to you to play around and to figure out with. Airtable automations are extremely powerful and there's a lot you can do with them. And that covers step four, the automations part. As a quick recap, we now have our Web Studio directory project created, cloned into our own account and ready to receive new directory submissions. That was step one. As step two, we created a database inside of Airtable that holds all of the data that we need for this project. Those include the actual directory items, the subscribers to our directory website, as well as any new directory submissions. In step three, we integrated all of this so that your Web Studio site dynamically shows what is in your Airtable database. So if you did want to make a change to what displays on your site, all you need to do is update the database on Airtable and you don't actually need to touch the Web Studio side. And finally, in step four, we automated the entire system so that when any of your forms get submitted, 
all that data is collected and safely stored inside of your Airtable account. And you can easily take that and automate it to create new directory items. As a final recap, we can take a look at our now published Web Studio site. We can see it lives on a Web Studio subdomain. This can be updated to your own domain name if you want it to. The site can be changed, modified to your heart's content as you now have full access and control everything end to end inside of your own Web Studio project. And if you did want to do so, all you'll need to do is hit the publish tab, connect to that domain and publish to your new domain. And that's a wrap on our Web Studio directory website. Let me know if you have any questions or if there's anything you'd like to see in a future video down in the comments below. Again, a quick reminder, all of this can be done and created fully white labeled. So there'll be no Web Studio branding on the front end of the site. Um, you can do this by signing up over on our main site, webstudio.is, uh, as well as creating an Airtable account over on Airtable.com. Thank you very much for taking the time, stopping by and following along. And I look forward to seeing you in the next one. Ciao.